So obviously, radiation has negative effects on our bodies, but we can use this um, to benefit our health as well. And this um, is called nuclear medicine. So there are a lot of diagnostic techniques that use radio tracers. So you put a radioactive nuclide into a compound or in a mixture and administer it to the body and that allows you to track where that compound goes in the body. It's a little bit like putting a little tracking device on a car and then you know, letting that person go off and seeing where do they go. So you can tag glucose or you can tag a certain medicine, you can tag all kinds of different things and then you can see them in the body. They're, these tracers are useful because they can be detected with great sensitivity and they are identical in chemical behavior to the non-radioactive counterparts. So you're not affecting the, um, the chemical behavior of the substance by putting this radio tracer on it. So one example is using iodine-131 to evaluate the thyroid. So your thyroid gland naturally concentrates iodine. And if you administer iodine-131 to a patient, it will accumulate in the thyroid. And then the radioactive iodine emits radiation, which can be detected. And so you can look at the rate of iodine uptake. You can measure that. You can image the thyroid gland without surgery. So that's good. Because yes, radiation is harmful, but cutting someone open is also harmful, right? Yeah. So different elements are taken up differentially um, into different organs. Um, so we can use, here's a partial list of things that can be used, um, and the types of emission, the half-lives, and the body parts that can be used to study. So, you know, phosphorus 32 gives off beta emission, has a half-life of 14 days. Um, this can be used to study tumors in various organs. Um, iron 59, radioactive isotope of iron, uh, can be used to evaluate your blood, your spleen, etc. So this is a whole area of, of medicine that overlaps with chemistry. You can also tag antibodies. We can tag antibodies with uh, technetium 99M. The M means metastable, uh, just so you know why there's an M there. Um, and the antibodies gather at the site of an infection. So you can administer the tagged antibodies, wait a little bit, and then you can do a scan and see where the infection is. Cancerous tumors naturally concentrate phosphorus. So you can administer P32 or a phosphate-containing compound that has the technetium 99M, and you can see where the tumors are. So this figure shows a bone scan created using the gamma ray emissions of technetium 99M. And so you can see that there's some, the bright spots are where the that radio tag is, is being concentrated. You may have heard of a PET scan, different than a CAT scan, although a cat is a pet, but this is a PET scan. Uh, positron emission tomography. So this is using positron emitting nucleides like fluorine 18. These get attached to meta metabolically active substances like glucose. And so then you give the person the glucose with F18 on it, and that glucose is going to travel to your heart and to your brain and allow us to image your heart or your brain. So as it decays, the positrons that get emitted combine with nearby electrons. And when that happens, you get two antiparticles. Well, the two antiparticles, sorry, annihilate each other and they produce two gamma rays 
And the cool thing about those two gamma rays is they travel in exactly opposite directions from each other. And so this allows you to get a very detailed set of images that show the rate of glucose metabolism and structural features of the organ. So these images are all generated using computers, of course, and then you also have to have a great deal of knowledge and skill to interpret what they mean. But this is pretty awesome if you think about how do you find out what's going on in someone's brain? You can't just cut them open and look, right? Because that would kill them or severely damage them. And so, yeah, we're using radiation here. The person is being exposed to radiation, but there's a benefit to this that outweighs the risks. So as we mentioned earlier, um, when you're exposed to radiation, the cells that are killed um, preferentially are those that are rapidly dividing. Strange noises in the hallway. Well, cancer cells are rapidly dividing. And so radiation is especially good at killing cancer cells. So we can use gamma rays um, and focus them on, on tumors that are, would be difficult to operate on. And we can use the gamma rays to kill the tumor. Um, you, what, what they do is they rotate the beam instead of just shining a beam on the, on the person to hit the tumor. The problem with that is you put enough radiation in there to kill the tumor, you're also gonna damage all the tissue that the beam goes through, right? So that's not good. So what they do is they take a beam of radiation and they hit the tumor and then they move it and they go at lots of different angles so that the healthy tissue gets a small dose of radiation, but the tumor gets all of it. And so the tumor gets a large dose, the healthy tissue gets a very small dose. Um, there still are side effects. Um, the patients generally develop symptoms of radiation sickness, which include nausea and vomiting. The risk analysis, a therapeutic dose of 100 REMS is estimated to increase cancer risk by 1%, but that's acceptable if the patient has a 100% chance of dying from cancer that he already has, right? So there are definitely um, negative side effects from radiotherapy, but it's used when, those, when the benefits outweigh those uh, negative side effects. Other applications of radiation. Radioactivity can be used to kill microorganisms. So it can be used to sterilize medical devices, um, especially implantable medical devices. So my dad has a pacemaker. So when you put the pacemaker into a patient's body, you need to make sure it's sterile, right? Because you don't want to be implanting bacteria or other microorganisms. So you need to sterilize it. Well, some of these devices cannot be sterilized in an autoclave. An autoclave uses pressure and heat to sterilize, you know, like scalpels and things. They're made out of stainless steel. They can withstand high temperatures and pressures. But a medical device maybe has a battery in it, right? You can't do that. But radiation can sterilize it. We can also use radiation to kill bacteria and parasites in food. You can kill E. coli and salmonella in raw meat and poultry. Um, as you can imagine, people um, tend to resist the irradiation of their food. Like, you're going to shine radiation on my food and then I'm going to eat that and people will go, ah, right? And they get all uptight about this. The radiation doesn't affect the food. It doesn't change the composition of the food. It doesn't make the food radioactive. It just kills the bad stuff. This is a picture of, gra of grapes, those are grapes, <laughs> strawberries. I don't know where that came from. Strawberries, um, these were irradiated, these were not. Okay, which would you rather eat? 
that does not look healthy. There's a whole bunch of mold. Microorganisms cause the strawberries to decay. If you irradiate them and kill the microorganisms, the strawberries stay fresh for much longer. You may not know this, but if you buy pork in the United States, it has been irradiated. And that's because if, if we don't irradiate pork and it's not cooked properly, there's trichinosis. And you can get extremely sick and die from undercooked pork if it hasn't been irradiated. All the pork is irradiated and so trichinosis isn't a problem in the United States. Um, radioactivity can be used to control populations of harm, harmful insects. Take a batch of fruit flies, sterilize them using radiation, and release them into the fields. They're going to mate with fruit flies who think they're reproducing, but then those fruit flies are not going to reproduce. And so that will cut down the size of the next generation of fruit flies. It's not going to eliminate them, but you can um, minimize the population that way.